everyone, and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. This is episode 28. Last time, we finally arrived to the Brazilian Forest. We're in the outskirts right now of the Dalish camp. We've been getting a lot of lore, a lot of history, and uh, we have already, um, already pissed off um, people here by stealing uh, a precious songbook from a chest because I'm a humble dwarf who just can't help himself. Kleptomaniac dwarf! Um, <laughs> alas, we continue. We will win back their love uh, by helping them out with their werewolf problem. Uh, we've added Win to the party instead of Morrigan uh, ever so briefly because we need to talk to Sorel, uh, which is part of uh, Win's regret um, companion quest. So we're going to start off with that, explore the rest of the outskirts before heading into the forest as well. From bitter experience, the Dalish have come to mistrust outsiders. You are not helping in this. From bitter experience, the Dalish have come to mistrust outsiders. You are not helping in this. Oh no. It's because I stole the songbook, isn't it? Yes. What is it you need? Have you news? Um. Oh no. I spoke to Lanaya about you. And what did she have to say? Uh, she obviously thinks very highly of you. And I of her. One day she will be keeper after I'm gone. She is more than ready. She said you've been keeper for a long time. That's true. Hundreds of years, if you must know. Slowly the Dalish will all know once again the agelessness of the elves. For now, only a few of us have regained that ability. But I cannot say any more on that. I trust your curiosity is sated. Sure. I must return to caring for my people. Creator's speed on your way. I don't wish to engage in idle gossip about your loss of family, so we'll leave that. Oh, what do you want now? I told you everything already. <laughs> um, I, it seems, do I have to be win? From bitter experience, the oh, no. mistrust outsiders. You are not helping in this. I wonder if this is because of the chest scenario, which means what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make a... Oh, this is awful. Uh, my previous save is like so... Is so long before I stole from the chest. Um, let's... I'm going to do a test. We're going to do a test. We're going to see if having win in our party um, before we've stolen from the chest... Damnation. will result in uh, us being able to um... I understand that there are mm. elves in the Kunari lands then there are elves everywhere hmm. yes well I've heard that the Kunari actually put the elves in charge over the humans is that true some of them only some which ones are they the ones who belong in charge that is the way of the Kun how does this Kyun determine who belongs in charge? The Tamas runs evaluate everyone and place them where their talents merit. But elves in general merit higher places than humans in Kunari society? Some of them. Back where we began. It's like talking to a water wheel. That's cool. Now if we talk to... Oh. They are a proud people. Those who refused to bow to defeat. So Zevran talks more when Morrigan's in the, uh, out of the party, instead of Wynn, apparently. We greet you, child of the stone. Now, we've I already gone through this before. Be in vain. An entire group of our hunters went into the forest to do as you intend, and they have not returned. So I'm going to go through this dialogue again and see if uh, we can speak to him afterwards with Wynn, because I may have messed up with the whole stealing from the chest thing, and I may have to... I may have to commit to reloading a save. I wasn't going to, but if it's preventing me from accessing a quest for win, I will have to. Is there something you need? Yep. So I have to commit to this reloaded save in order to get the information on Aniran. Because he doesn't want to talk to us anymore because we stole the songbook. Cool. Uh, what that means is all of that discussion that took place last episode and all of those items that I found and everything I will just redo because it's worth it for this 
try not to steal so much, you silly little cunning dwarf rogue. <laughs> when will I learn that my actions have consequences? I I appreciate you trying to find him, but what are the chances? Anaren the healer? You know Anaren? He... he lives? No, it can't be him. Perhaps it is a common elven name. No, I know of only one Anaren. Ah, it makes sense. Aniran said that he was from the human cities. You are old friends then. Wow. If it is the same Aniran, then yes, Wynn knows him. If you seek Aniran, you must venture into the forest. He prefers to be amidst the trees and the animals. Thank you all so much. Wow. Darth Shirol. Okay, and now he no longer has the mark above his head. I wonder if you're able to just wander upon Aniran in the forest without having to have that conversation, but I guess we know. Uh, I think that means that uh, we're going to rock with this party instead. Uh, Win, Zev, and Sten instead of uh, Morrigan. Uh, I'm going to run through everything again, uh, and then I'll proceed. Okay, we are ready to proceed. I have engaged in dialogue the exact same way with all of the characters that I did last time, and I have not explored over this area yet. So we're going to do that now. We're just going to completely ignore that chest uh, as well. <laughs> if only I spoke to, like... Oh, nice. If only I spoke to that person about win stuff before the chest, then we probably would have ended up committing to the chest stealing. Uh, but alas, I've done it in a different order. Oh, finally, I know I can identify one that I haven't read before immediately. My elf fruit, the herbalist suggested powdered bronto horn. I was very discreet, your sunflower. Pile of sacks. Let's have a look in the pile of sacks. Ooh, some new animals. That sound, that sound very interesting. Hala. Okay. Very well. Um, so shall we talk to Gainer and see what her, her deal with, uh, with, with, with Kamen? I'm Darren Atishan, outsider. Okay. You are Gainer, correct? Kamen mentioned you. You spoke to him? What did he say? Oh, um, he said that you were cruel and that he hates you. <laughs> he said that if he was lucky, he would bed you soon. And he said that you refused to give him your hand. I, let's, uh, let's go with the first one. <laughs> oh, I don't expect an outsider to understand our ways, but I just can't bond with Kamen. He's been a hunter apprentice for over two years now. And he's yet to slay a proper beast. Each time he's tried, something has gone wrong. Perhaps the creators do not wish us to bond. I cannot bond with an apprentice hunter, can I? This is funny because he's like, she's being cruel to me. I'm like, you haven't done what you're supposed to do in order to win this girl's heart, my man. If you love him, it doesn't matter what he is, does it? Well, do you love him? Of course not. He's not good enough for you. You are cruel. No wonder Kamen hates you. No, I don't suppose you could. This is interesting. So now I'll, I'll be helping him out anyway with a persuasion. Well, he, the only reason he's not hunting an animal right now is because he's not allowed to go into the woods because of the current situation. So if he solves the current situation, then he doesn't have an excuse after that, right? Oh, I don't suppose you could. He will get over it in time. It hurts me to see him like this, but just tell Kamen I am sorry. Interesting. You spoke to Gaina, but were unable to change her mind. She thinks he is a child and refuses to consider him until he completes his hunt. I respect it. I respect it. So uh, we should uh, we should slide in there instead. I've I've slain many a beast. <clears throat> I have slain Darkspawn. I have slain two dragons. Um, 
Yes, I have killed many beasts. I, 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 so many ogres have slain by my hand. So what do you say? <laughs> so what do you say? Fen Harel, we read about you. Fen Harel, the dread wolf. There is precious little we know about Fen Harel, for they say he did not care for our people. Elganan and Mithal created the world as we know it. Andril taught us the ways of the hunter. Silas and June gave us fire and crafting, but Fen Harel kept to himself and plotted the betrayal of all the gods. And after the destruction of Arlathan, when the gods could no longer hear our prayers, it is said that Fen Harel spent centuries in a far corner of the earth, giggling madly and hugging himself in glee. The legends say that before the fall of Arlathan, the gods we know and revere fought an endless war with others of their kind. There is not a Haran among us who remembers these others. Only in dreams do we hear whispers. Do we hear whispered the names of Geld Geldaran and Darnthal and Anaris, for they are the forgotten ones, the gods of terror and malice, spite and pestilence. In ancient times, only Fen Harel could walk without fear among both our gods and the Forgotten Ones, for although he is kin to the gods of the people, the Forgotten Ones knew of his cunning ways and saw him as one of their own. And that is how Fen Harel tricked them. Our gods saw him as brother. They trusted him when he said that they must keep to the heavens while he arranged a truce. And the Forgotten Ones trusted him also when he said he would arrange for the defeat of our gods if only the Forgotten Ones would return to the Abyss for a time. They trusted Fenharel, and they were all of them betrayed, and Fenharel sealed them away so they could never again walk among the people. It's very interesting reading a lot of high fantasy style lore, because you get a bunch of locations and names that you've never read before, and you just have to try. I try my best to just go through it, reading it. It's like reading a script for the first time with a bunch of words you've never seen and going, I'm going to try my best. I don't think with that in mind, I do too bad. To read through things where I'm just like, I see brand new names and I'm like, yes, that's how it's said. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how that's how it's said. <laughs> Until I hear otherwise. So you are the Grey Warden who is supposed to save us. I never thought I would hear of an outsider who would ever They just all say the same things. The Hala. The Dalish call them their guides. They even lead an elf to oblivion when he dies, or so they claim. I'm getting a lot of nice little commentary from Zev, which is cool. Gilanain, <laughs> uh, mother of the Hala. They say Gilanain was one of the people in the days before Arlathan and the chosen of Andriel the Huntress. She was very beautiful, with hair of snowy white, and as graceful as a gazelle. She kept always to Andril's ways, and Andril favoured her above all others. One day, while hunting in the forest, Gilanain came across a hunter she did not know. At his feet lay a hawk, shot through the heart by an arrow. Gilanain was filled with rage, for the hawk, along with the hare, is an animal is a much beloved is much beloved of Andril. Gilanain demanded that the hunter make an offering to Andril in exchange for taking the life of one of her creatures. The hunter refused, and Gilanain called upon the goddess to curse him so that he could never again hunt and kill a living creature. Gilanain's curse took hold, and the hunter found that he was unable to hunt. His prey would dart out of sight, and his arrows would fly astray. His friends and family began to mock him for his impotence. For what use is a hunter who cannot hunt? Ashamed, the hunter swore he would find Gilanain and repay her for what she had done to him. He found Galanain while she was out on a hunt with her sisters and lured her away from them with lies and false words. He told Galanain that he had learned his lesson and begged her to come with him so she could teach him to make a proper offering to Andriel. Moved by his plea, Galanain followed the hunter, and when they were away from all her sisters, the hunter turned on Galanain. He blinded her first, then bound her as one would bind a kill fresh from the hunt. But because he was cursed, the hunter could not kill her. Instead, he left her for dead in the forest and Galanain prayed to the gods for help. She prayed to Elganan for vengeance, to Mother Mythal to protect her, but above all, she prayed to Andriel. Andriel sent her hairs to Galanain, and they chewed through the ropes that bound her, but Galanain was still wounded and blind, and could not find her way home. So Andriel turned her into a beautiful white deer, the first Hala, and Galanain found her way back to her sisters, and led them to the hunter who was brought to justice. And since that day, the Hala have guided the people and have never led us astray, for they listen to the voice of Galanain. There are just so many great stories in, in this one. Like I said, with my um, 
with last episode uh, going through those codex entries. Like these are some of my favorite things that we we have read. Absolutely, uh, I'm loving I'm loving these stories. Who comes? Oh, I beg your pardon, stranger. I was so busy attending to the Hala, I did not hear your approach. Who are you? My name is Alora. I am the master herder in charge of caring for the Hala. Not as exciting as being a Grey Warden, but the Hala are vital to us. What is a Hala? They are the noble beasts that pull our Aravel. What humans call land ships. They are our companions and our guides. We have nothing similar in Orzammar except the Bronto. I have heard of the Bronto. They are beasts of burden, yes? The Hala are not like that. We ride the Hala, but never with reins or a saddle. It is the Hala who decide where to lead us, and our privilege that they take our Aravel with them. In return, it's the herder's job to speak to the Hala and care for their needs. It's a bond of friendship, and not servitude. So why have you separated this one from the others? I fear she may have been bitten during the werewolf attack. I have tried speaking with her, but she is too agitated for me to understand. The curse would not affect her as it would us, but it would still be lethal. And it may prove contagious to the other Hala as well. I can find no wound on her, but if she's truly ill, then... Then I will have to put her out of her misery, for her sake as well as that of the others. Hmm. Is there anything I can do to help? I don't know. Do you have any skills that might help her? If you do, I would be grateful. Ooh, survival skills. Pretend to examine? Goddamn. Uh, survival, examine the Hala. And? What do you think? Persuade lie you are right. <laughs> I cannot find an injury. I'm not sure what's wrong. I am glad you attempted it regardless. Survival, try to calm. I My survival skill, I don't think is high enough. Um, uh, I think my survival is only tier one. Sten has a tier two. No, no, I'm sorry. She isn't calming any more around you than she is for me. I'm sorry, I tried my best. I know, it was kind of you to try. I'm not, mm, nah. I will watch her for a while longer and see if her condition changes. I am grateful for your assistance, friend. Aravels and Hala. No creature is more revered by the Dalish than the Hala. No other animal has a god of its own. These white stags are much larger than ordinary deer, and the Dalish Hala keepers carve their antlers as they grow, making them curve into intricate designs. In ancient times, these stags bore elven knights into combat, but since the fall of the Dales, they are used less as mounts and more to pull the Aravels. And the Aravels, the Dalish, who band together in small groups of blood relatives, travel in ornately carved wagons known as Aravel, drawn by large white stags called Hala. The Aravel are a unique sight, beautiful in their sweeping curvature and adorned with broad hoods and bright silken cloths that flap in the wind, often displaying the noble banners that once flew over that family's house. Most humans refer to the Aravel as land ships, for in a strong wind, it can often appear as if the elves travel in longboats with sails high overhead to announce their arrival or warn others away. The harlot unique to the elves. Every time I move, sometimes I'm like, where am I? The Hala are unique to the elves, and any but elven handlers consider them ornery and almost impossible to train. To the Dalish, they are noble beasts, superior in breeding to the horse. Certainly most humans would agree that the Hala are as beautiful as the elves themselves. The fact that many imperial nobles maintain a bounty on Hala horns that find their way into Tevinter is an affront the Dalish consider unforgivable. Few among us can claim to have seen the Dalish landships up close, any human who sees them on the horizon does well to head the other way. Few Dalish clans take kindly to humans intruding on their camps, and more than one tale tells of troublemaking humans who found themselves mercilessly filled with da Dalish arrows. Nice. We're almost filled with creatures. Halfway through items. Got one more character. Two more notes. There's still a bunch of bunch more spell combinations. New quest, Alora's Hala. 
One of the herd has been infected with the werewolf blood curse may die. You examine the beast but have not discovered the problem. Greater survival skill would likely be needed to tell for certain. And our survival is, I believe, only on one. That's unfortunate. No, no, Sten has only one as well. I have one character that has more, but it obviously wouldn't be tied to, wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. Unfortunately. Oh well, you you're not able to do everything in in one run of a game, unless you just max out your character super super ahead of time to prepare yourself for anything and everything. But it just doesn't seem like realistic. I don't. See, I would rather them deal with the Hotler in their own way than me just going like, I could kill it. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm kill it if you want. I think that means that we have done with the outskirts encampment. And we can go into the Brazilian forest. Okay. This is like my home in Saharon, but the fiends here are only monsters. A lot of elf fruit in an elfin forest? Who would have thought? Oh, the wolves. Okay. Whoa, look at these spiky boys. Light wolves. Oh my. Oh, hoo -hoo. A towel in the winds. All right. God, all of that, that wolf sound effect. Uh, I just realized that we don't have debilitation <laughs> uh, magic anymore. We are, we are back to having healers. This is going to be an interesting group to have in that case. I'm, I'm quite curious to see how this is going to go. Nice. Wolf did get the groups done. It is enough. Well, all right then. All right, we have slain our first werewolves. And Dane stood his ground. He stood his ground. The fanged beast approached. He saw the rage within its eyes. The wolf that once was there. The sword he raised. Merciful death be praised. To the maker went his prayer. From the popular telling of Dane and the werewolf, a legend of Ferelden, circa 50th year in the Black Age. Ferelden lore is full of instances where these creatures have plagued the countryside. Wolves possessed by rage demons and transformed into humanoid monsters with incredible speed and strength, able to spread a curse to those they bit that would drive them mad with unthinking fury. When in this enraged state, a human host can likewise become possessed and be transformed into a feral, wolf-like beast. Tales differ on these werewolves of human origin. Some claiming that their transformation into a bestial form happens uncontrollably. Some claim the transformation is irreversible. As is often the case with demonic tales, both versions were most likely true at some point. The ability of normal dogs to detect a werewolf even when it is in human guise is what first led Ferelden's to adopt dogs as indispensable companions in every farmhold. The alliance between humans and regular wolves is the subject of the popular Ferelden folk tale, Dane and the Werewolf. The actual hero Dane led a crusade to eliminate the werewolf threat during the early Black Age, and while werewolves have never assumed the same prominence since, there have still been reports of individual packs lurking in remote forests. In recent years, some have even reported to have developed an uncanny willpower and intelligence, though why, though why is so is still unknown. Okay. A firing point. This is the spot where D's message needs to be sent. Oh yeah, right. Leave until you have a bow equipped and ready. Oh, do I have to have the bow specifically? 
I have no archery skills, and also I sold the only bow that I was holding on to at the time. I didn't, and you don't have a. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! You're holding on to a bow, thank you. Here's one I prepared earlier. Um, thank you. Fire an arrow over the trees. Uh, I've never done archery before, but I am. Uh, let's go. Archery Dwarf, the message has been sent. It has not gone unnoticed. Right. You've made some important enemies with your little arrows. You're through. Oh! Hello, General Mercenaries. Um, I am going to change my weaponry. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Okay. Let me just put those back on. Ooh, nice <laughs> oh my god. Shall we compete for points? As you say. Let us end this. Nice. Time for a little bl Wait. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> You're punching them. That's so funny. Do that. You're punching them. It's hilarious. Zev, get your daggers out. That's so funny. I shall do it. A weed. <laughs> Adequate. Adequate. Okay. It shall be done. Folded missive by order of Amir Thorogood. We know they are out there, and they will move when their fellow vermin call them out. Watch for the sign and slaughter the lot. They will know it is coming and probably abandon the poor sap of a messenger, but even in that, our message will be sent with an authority theirs cannot have. It appears the messenger was not expected to survive the message, but you defeated the ambush and Dee's associates know it is safe to move. Return to the Nord Noble for my reward. Very well. Very well. Oh, there's a tent and a fire pit down there. Andraste's Grace. Andraste's Grace. Great bear. Uh, Andraste's Grace is um, something that Leliana wants, right? Attack! I guess we're attacking it immediately. It's literally not even fighting back. That Mabari did not hesitate. Oh, it's one of the knights. Wonder if this is oh no, it's a Templar. Templar? What is a Templar doing out here? Um Andraste's Grace, a small white wildflower, commonly known as an Andraste's Grace. Leliana wishes for this, does she not? Autosave. Whoa, whoa! Swift runner, hello. The Watch Wolves have spoken truly, my brothers and sisters. The Dalish sent the Dwarf of all things to put us in our place. They sent a Dwarf to make us pay for our attack. Oh, that's, this is so cool. All right, like dialogue with werewolves. Oh, I love this because like every single like fantasy game I've ever played, if they have beasts or werewolves, they're all just like mindless raging creatures, right? And you never really, at least in my experience, have any sort of communication with them or stuff like that. This is incredible. I love that they have a level of intelligence to them. Oh, that just makes this so much more exciting because... I think it adds a whole other element. So instead of you just being like, ah, we're under attack by these mindless beasts, go and kill them. And you go, I'm going to go kill these mindless beasts now because they're evil. However, now adding the other element of I'm going to go and kill these beasts and you walk into the forest and then they actually speak to you. You're like, the plot thickens. Okay, there is a whole other ball game here now. Let's play. I'm excited. And they're like, they're pissed off because I'm a dwarf as well. Like, they're sending a dwarf? This is, this is just an insult. 
And then this is great, because it's like, you speak. I thought werewolves were savage beasts. I uh, just here to kill Witherfang. I am no servant of the Dalish. Do you take us for fools? <sighs> we know you come from their camp outside the forest. No doubt the old keeper himself sent you. You speak to Swift Runner. I lead my cursed brothers and sisters. Turn back now. Go back to the Dalish and tell them that you have failed. Tell them we will gladly watch them suffer the same curse we have suffered for too long. We will watch them pay. Yo, this is this is fantastic. This is fantastic. The voice work is incredible. You are the werewolves who ambush the Dalish then. You sound, you sound as if you hate the Dalish a great deal, and we've got a persuade or a begone <laughs> intimidate. Persuade. I would prefer to talk to you. I mean you no harm. Was it not Safrian who sent you? <sighs> he wishes only our destruction. Never to talk. Dude, their design looks so cool as well. I love it. You talk of Zathrian as if you know him. You attacked his clan. Why should he not retaliate? Is there no way this can be resolved peacefully? Imagine being able to reach a peaceful resolution with werewolves. I want to know more about this wolf Witherfang. Okay. And tell me about this curse of yours. First option. You talk of Zathrian as if you know him. <sighs> we have never met he and I. He would not survive the experience. I swear it. Okay. Why exactly? Why do you hate him so much? You know nothing, do you? Nothing of us, and even less of those you serve. You are a fool, and we are done talking. Run from the forest while you can. Run to the Dalish and tell them they are doomed. I want to talk. I'm going nowhere. I don't want to fight, but neither can I retreat. I'm gonna. In, I'm gonna. We're gonna go for intimidate now. I'm going nowhere. <sighs> Very well. I will not risk throwing my people at you like unthinking brutes. Come, brothers and sisters, let us retreat. The forest has eyes of its own, and it will deal with intruders as it always has. Dude. Oh, that is so cool. I want to talk to them more, though. I have a feeling that most of those dialogue trees would have probably led to similar sort of, like, stop talking. But there's, this is great. There's some tension here in terms of, uh, you know, what we can actually talk to them about for now. But what this means is there's definitely some form of possibility for us to... No, I don't know if there's going to be a negotiate or a peaceful option, but there's certainly some sort of um, situation here where we can speak to them at the very least to understand what's going on here. <laughs> So we got werewolves and rabid werewolves. Who's begun? With you. <laughs> what does Zev have on him as well, by the way? Ah, uh, yes, he's got his he's got his daggers, which is great, but they've got no rune stones in them at all. I might need a take some inventory, take some items from some other characters and put them on him because he's a little bit, a little bit under equipped. He's a little bit under equipped as a result. Very well. Oh man, werewolf pelts. Let's go. I think it's fine for now because my character and uh, Stan at the very least, very well equipped. So Zev can kind of get away with not being as well equipped. Reduces hostility and plus 10 to healing effects received. Um, yeah, we'll keep what we got. It's off. <laughs> Whoa, is that ogre here? Okay, stands off by himself. Oh, and Darkspawn. 
Sten, Sten, you're doing you're doing great, my guy. Um, this is one thing that I need to stop you doing because I feel like you can just attack with your normal spells instead of draining your mana of arcane bolt all the time. Uh, dog. Let's get a bit of a group stun in there, please. I am ready. Get up. You will not win. Time for a little bloodletting, I see. Shall we not? Silver cord. As you say. As you say. I shall do it. Thanks, Wynn, for deciding to show up. Fallen tree. Whoa! We really Lord of the Rings now. The Ents. Oh, we actually have living trees. Oh, this is so good because this is like all the legends that we've like been reading about, about like the trees that you're not allowed to cut down. It shall be done. Whoa! There's a tree enemy. They cannot be stunned, which kind of makes sense. Stop targeting me. I'm but a humble dwarf. Whoa. Whoa. For demons crossing over into our world, mankind is not always the preferred prey. Possessing humans means risking encounters with powerful mages and templars, as well as other complications. Some demons find it far easier to seek out animals or even plants, assuming that these will make a suitable a host as a human. Those that possess trees are known as wild sylvans. Generally, only demons of rage, the weakest of the demon hierarchy, will become a sylvan. Once they do, they must spend a great deal of time twisting and molding the host in order to make it mobile. And once they have sylvan, once they have the sylvan, is a powerful and deadly opponent. Other, more intelligent spirits have also been known to become sylvans and are generally much less violent. But these are rare. Slow but immensely powerful, wild sylvans prefer to lay in ambush, waiting for a victim to become lost, tired, or trapped before closing in for the kill. They hide among regular trees, nearly undetectable until they begin to move and to reach. When they do come to life, as some travelers say, they stand tall, roots forming into legs and feet, and branches stretching out into lashing arms. When not presented with a living target, however, it has been noted that sylvans often fall into a form of dormancy, perhaps brought on by the nature of their tree host, where, while mobile, they normally return to wherever they were rooted once their prey has been killed. For both these reasons, a forest that has sylvans within can become incredibly dangerous to pass through for very long periods of time. That is so cool. Oh, nice. There's the iron bark. There's the iron bark. This place has so many cool things happening with it right now. I'm so excited. Oh my dude, god. <laughs> they really do just appear out of nowhere. I can see them now. I feel like that would be one. Okay, I can kind of see them in the distance now, but goddamn, they just really pop out of nowhere. Look at their faces, dude. That's so cool. And terrifying. Oh! Okay. They got them they got them Freya moves. Uh, so there's something that I just saw called Grand Oak, which is this guy. Get off. Oh, oh, we got dog spawn up there too.
Uh, we will proceed down this way. Grand Oak. Hello there, Grand Oak. Look at this massive tree as well. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so we're about to just murder all of your all of your potential friends here before we talk to this character. Oh, another fatality! I'm not even fighting you. Oh my god, there's just so many of them. He's taking a poop, this one. Alright. Do you mind? I must have a word with the Grand Oak, apparently. Hello there. Hmm. What manner of beast be thee that comes before this elder tree? And this got to be one of my favorite parts of the game so far. This is just so good. We're dealing with we're dealing with demonic trees, the Ents, but evil. We're dealing with werewolves. We got this incredible elvish lore. It is definitely like a massive highlight for me. <laughs> Can't you see me? I'm a werewolf. Persuade. <laughs> a genuine persuade option for the werewolf. Hmm. Aware, thou sayest? How can this be? I sense no curse inside of thee. Could it be, instead, a lie? There is no need. Why even try? You speak in riddles. You speak in rhyme. This forest is full of dangers, that's why. It is true thou seest it clear. There are beasts and thieves aplenty here. Allow me a moment to welcome thee. I am called the Grand Oak, sometimes the Elder Tree. The world is certainly full of marvelous, unexpected creations. Each day we see something that we never thought possible. And unless thou thinkst it far too soon, might I ask of thee a boon? Why do you speak in rhymes? I do not know. Why dost thou not? Thy words seem plain, a mundane lot. Perhaps a poet's soul's in me. Does that make me a poet tree? <laughs> poetry. I, I hate that. <laughs> poetry, yes, I get it. It was but a simple jest. A jibe to entertain my guest. What uh, are you exactly? I am an elder oak and nothing more. Though once I dreamt of a time before when I roamed the world and howled with pain. Not of this world, but twixt and Perhaps I was a spirit then, a wandering thing drawn to this glen. But then that spirit joined with a tree. Since then, a tree is all I be. Okay. It just seems that the other trees are far more hostile. Of the Sylvans, this is true. They are quite mad. Their virtues few. A spirit trapped within a tree. No mouth to scream or eyes to see. A cage of bark, a prison wood. A thing of rage where nature stood. So twisted sylvan they become. But I am not the same as some. I accept my fated oaken home. I feel no need to rage and roam. I would like to know more of this forest. 
I can only speak to what a tree may see. It may not help you, but it is enough for me. Why is it called the Brazilian forest exactly? That is but a human name. One placed upon this land, their claim. A claim they stole from ancient elves, whom they first killed and were killed themselves. They were elves who lived here. It was the elves who planted the seeds, raised the forest, saw to its needs. But that was all so long ago that they are dead is all I know. Okay. What happened here to make the forest like this? A great war, perhaps. I cannot tell. I was not here when it befell. But many deaths here, all the same. And with the deaths, the spirits came. The spirits entered corpse and tree, and most went mad, as thou canst see. The forest had a spirit of its own, from back when its first seeds were sown. Perhaps she died of grief that day, or perhaps she simply went away. Or perhaps the wares are the ones to blame, for the day she left is the day they came. Okay. Hmm. I don't understand. I speak as clearly as I see. Plainer than this, I cannot be. Hmm. Is there anything around here of note? Most of what was is overgrown, leaving only broken stone. Perhaps some ruins remain free of rot. I know not where I see them not. Where can I find Witherfang's lair? In the center of the forest, the wares do dwell, or so go the tales my fellows tell. But they cannot be followed there. The forest doth protect the wares. Why do the trees protect them? Perhaps wares use magic to command the trees. All I know is they move as they please. Is there any other way to get to the center of the forest? Perform the boon as I ask, and I shall reward thee for the task. I have but one desire, to solve a matter very dire. As I slept one early morn, a thief did come and steal an acorn. And you want it back, I take it? All I have is my being. My seed. Without it, I am alone indeed. I cannot go and seek it out. Yet I shall die if left without. Okay. I think it's better if I just kill you. Uh, I can look for your acorn. What's in it for me, tree? Hmm. Oh, iron bark? My wooden skin some magic, see, and part of it I can give to thee. Okay. Prefer if you helped me find Witherfang interesting. I feel like I can do it without his help, but what good will your wood do me? The forest would see thee as a tree. Oh. So no harm would come to thee. Interesting. Okay. That sounds like a fine reward. Wilt thou then perform the task? Wilt thou save me as I ask? Where would I find this thief? It was stolen by a human man. Deep within these woods he ran. Woods that I could travel there. I teach the fool to soon beware. Mm, very well, I will help you. Go to the east to find this man. I shall await. Do what thou can. That was so cool. This is bizarre. I love this game so much. 
And it's just such a such a crazy time. Campsite appears remarkably intact. The tents and bedrolls are covered with leaves, but are dry and whole. The fire pit smokes and possesses embers enough to build into a small flame. There are no signs of any inhabitants. This is strange. The werewolves would not use such a camp, would they? Whoever this belongs to must be nearby. It could belong to the elves. Perhaps they will return. You get no hint of danger, though it strikes you as odd the camp is abandoned. Perhaps searching the camp will give more clues as to its nature. Dirt-covered root. You don't know what it's for. Thank you for your dirt-covered root. Dog? A slightly dirty pair of silk pantaloons? <sighs> Aha! One can never have too many pairs of pantaloons. For a... <sighs> yes. Dirty pair of pantaloons. These pantaloons, crusted with soil, were probably buried for years before the Mabari dug them up. On closer inspection, it appears that they were once either gold or silver in colour. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, dog. You examine the remains of the fire pit. It has been untended for several hours at most. The embers draw you in, almost hypnotizing you. There is something Ooh. odd here. The way the fire draws the eye. Oh. Stay alert. This could be some kind of trap. The flames emit a sudden warmth, draining your strength even more. You turn away, the chill seeping back into your bones. You are exhausted. Um, whoa, what the hell? You look inside the tent and are surprised by how dry and cozy it feels. It is clean but empty. What a pleasant place to rest your head. The elven hunters didn't make this camp, yet I don't feel very bloody concerned about that. I just want a nap, of all things. Go figure. We can't leave yet. Let me stay alert. We can't sleep here. We need to go. It takes all your strength to step back from the tent. A wave of weariness washes through you despite your efforts to resist it. Oh god. Um, I'm going to make a save here real quick because I don't know what the hell's about to go down here. But I think if we fall asleep, we're in trouble. It shall be done. You examine the bedroll. It looks clean and warm. You feel like you haven't slept in ages. It'd be so nice to curl and sleep. I feel magic here. Draining my strength. We must leave. And soon... Sleeping here would be bad, I think. We should leave. Unable to resist its strange siren call, you trudge back to the tents and quickly collapse and drift off into a blissful sleep. Yep, by investigating all three things, it's happened. I thought this was going to happen if we kept investigating instead of leaving. That was uh, less fun than I would have liked. <laughs> Whoa, what the hell? As you turn to leave, you find your steps growing leaden. Fatigue tugs at your limbs and you yawn. It has been a long journey. Perhaps it is safe to rest here. You know, if it's not the same to you, why don't we sit down for a while? Strange as it sounds, I'd rather camp here before going back out into the forest. Let's not fight it. Let's turn around and see what happens. We should use the camp. We need to sleep. You're right. So hard to think clearly. What the hell is going on right now? You know, if it's all the same. Okay. What? But now there's no camp there at all. It's all bones. Oh. Holy fuck! Holy shit! Why is Wynn the only one to be okay? And everyone else got up! We all- we- every- What the fuck? Holy shit, dude. What the fuck? What the hell? Try that again! Oh, 
With the shade destroyed, the fog seems to lift. The camp that was here is ancient, and the remnants of the shade's victims all lie as if sleeping still. How long has that spirit lingered there? And how many has it preyed upon? I shudder to think of it. Whoa. So the camp was an illusion, and we're just like chilling. That was so cool, but like terrifying. I'm like, what the hell is what the hell is gonna happen? I thought we were gonna get like um almost just totally um I thought we were just going to get totally screwed for a second there and we'd end up in some weird dream world scenario. It's not, wouldn't be the first time a fantasy RPG has stuck your party in a random dream world. Wouldn't be the first time in this game that you've been stuck in the fade. So that was really, really cool. Um, these Dalish gloves have got to be for, for Zev as a gift, right? God, it's so ominous just like seeing them like sleeping in the bones. Um, let's save. Let's give Zev... The gloves? Gloves? You're giving me gloves? What for? They're Dalish and also cutscene. Nice. They're Dalish gloves like your mother's. I... Maker's breath. You're right. It is like my mother's. The leather was less thick and it had more embroidery, but these are very close and quite handsome. Nice. Um, it, was, it was not cheap. I say, you was nothing. Still, I appreciate the fact that you even thought of me. No one has simply given me a gift before. Thank you. Oh, so Zev has repressed the memories uh, of me giving him... Um... Oh, cool. Uh, he's repressed the memories of uh, me giving him that chastity belt then. Um, okay, nice. Um, so he's actually... It's actually an equipped weapon for a plus one dexterity. The deer skin was cut thicker for the index and middle finger, so it would withstand heavy use by archers. When equipped in a set with the Dalish armor and boots, the character gains a bonus to defense. So it's actually a it's actually a set to them, which is really cool. You can have that too. How about that? Very nice. What would you like? Well, we got a cool, we got a cool reward. A landmark tree for a dog to pee. See, I'm taking notes from you, Grand Oak. See, I, I am great at rhyming. I love a magic creepy forest. That is so cool. Okay, apparently there's an ancient tombstone. Which is over there. I fell down the cliff? Okay. Um, I need to get up and then around. Can you stop making noise, please? Oh, the enemies have respawned. Okay. I'll do it. So nice to have Wynne properly doing what she's supposed to do, keeping her distance. Remember when she just would charge into combat even when I had ranged behavior on? That was so weird. Oh. Uh, Dagon? What? Who, uh, who comes? You're badly wounded. What happened to you? We were sent to find Witherfang. Bring his heart. Attacked. I... Try to revive him. Kill him while he's unconscious. Oh my god. Um, examine him. His wounds are deep and some are still bleeding heavily. The result of an attack by creatures with large claws. He does not appear to have any bite marks. 
Okay, so his wounds are deep, but he does not appear to have any bite marks. Is it only bites that suffer the thing? Cast a healing spell on him. Win, please. You healed me with magic. I suppose you must have. Thank you. I only vaguely remember you finding me. I am very lucky that you did, I think. You are a child of the stone, obviously. Thank you for your help. Okay. Who are you? I am just a simple hunter of my clan. Dagon of the Dalish. Obviously, my clan must know of you. Might I ask who you are? I am Mapo of the Grey Wardens. A pleasure to make your acquaintance, then. Tell me what happened. We were in the forest searching for Witherfang. We found traces, but made no sighting of the beast itself. We were not a day into the forest when we were ambushed by a group of werewolves. We did not expect them to be so cunning. I managed to crawl away during battle. I expect the others are dead. At least I was not bitten. You want me to come with you? No, I am certain I can make it safely back to my people alone. But thank you for the offer. You should head back to your camp. That would be wise. I must speak with the Keeper. Oof. Wounded in the forest. Man was just chilling. I need to... How do I get over here? I need to get... Oh. Literally right here. Why, why is my brain stop working? How do I get over there? Seize direct clear path to get over there. Yes. A painted sky ball. This almost perfect orb is made of a polished black stone that has been painted to look like the night sky, complete with constellations. A gravestone and a mystical site of power. You see a tombstone before you, it gives an uneasy feeling. <laughs> Leave it alone. Mystical site of power. Okay. Uh, I've engaged with a mystical site of power and nothing has happened. And I've also investigated the tombstone and I can't do anything with it. Curious. Not sure what that means. Surely there's something that we can do here. Maybe we have to just wait? Who knows? Um, Alright, I guess we're heading to the... we're heading to the East Forest then. South exit to East Forest and a North exit to East Forest. And we have not gone, or well, we can go straight there or straight there. Okay. Really like this sort of magical blue flame stuff we've got on here. East Brazilian Forest. Shall be Noises, dude. Can't do anything with them. Oh, 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 shit. She is a wolf. I kind of wish that it didn't spoil it with her name there. Like, 
you highlight it and it's like it's a quest thing but goddamn that kind of sucks um yeah Arthros's wife so Zathrian lied she is a wolf please help listen I am not the mindless beast I appear to be. What happened to you? They... I am cursed. Turned into this creature. A curse. It... It burns in me. I fled into the forest. The werewolves, they... took me in. I had to return. I had to. You are one of the dwarven folk. I am. That was once an elf. One of the Dalish. Until my change. Do you know of my clan? This is crazy. Um, I genuinely, I'm getting some weird vibes from Zathrian, right? Because he's like secretive about some stuff. He, you know, he's had some stuff happen to him, but he's one that's achieved apparently much longer life. He's lying to people about things. I don't know what's going on here. It's, it's gonna, it seems like it's gonna be very clear that it's like, just going in to go and take out the werewolves is not that simple which is very common place for all of the big quests we've had to do for all of the treaties in um in this game so far which is amazing i love it makes it so much more compelling i'm really interested to get into the werewolf side of things because there there do be this unfortunate curse but at the same time i'm not sure what's going on here um your keeper, Zathrian, is the one who sent me here. The keeper sent you? Then you seek with a fang. I do. Have you seen him? I have, but... It is not what you think. But there is no time to explain. You must listen. My name is Nine. My... Husband, he is called Athras. Please, you must bring him a message. There is death in her eyes. It will not be long now. The staff I will bring it to him. Tell him I love him. Tell him I am dead and with the gods. I I spoke to Arthurus. He worries about you. I want him to be at peace. He is a good man. Please do not let him suffer thinking of me. Oh, the pain. The curse is fire in my blood. Please, hand it for me. Hand it quickly. Wow. Oh, it's kind of, it, it hurts that there is like this option here where it's like, I, I want to do as she asks here. There must be some way to heal you. I need answers first. Please, you must help me. And I will end your pain. Uh, the persuade option feels like such a dick move to do. There must be some way to heal you. Magic will not work against the curse. Oh, you must admit. I can't do that. I'll take you back to the camp. Yeah, all right. Let's just bring the werewolf back to the camp. I'm going to try the persuade option of I need answers first. Please, you must help me. I, I will tell you what I know if you promise. To end my pain. Very well, I promise. 
<laughs> the new this. The werewolves are no longer <laughs> violent animals. They have <laughs> overcome the curse. <laughs> Like I have. There is a ruin in the center of the forest. You may find them there. They will think you mean to kill them. I can tell you no more. The pain it is too much. Please fulfill your. On this. So be it. Gods. Bless you. Dude. Give uh, Denyla's scarf to her husband, Athras. You met a werewolf who said she was once an elf called Denyla. She wanted you to bring her scarf to her husband, and she, then she forced you to kill her to end her suffering. And wants us to... Wants us to tell him that she's dead. And I, I think we gotta... I think we gotta honor her wishes there. And she's told us a very interesting thing. Uh a very very interesting detail that the werewolves have overcome the curse and are not just mindless beasts and we know that because well. uh based on the fact that we had a conversation with one of them which is like the craziest part so there's definitely a whole other angle here and am i going to be able to negotiate a form of peace between them is zathrian capable of seeing that outcome or is he like no kill them and that's it you know we're heading back to the camp and we will oh god we're heading back to the camp of which we are now going up against more bears oh my god there's so many we killed one bear and now look kill one bear of the forest and summon the whole family Sev is actually doing a great job at literally just standing there. Still remember my first battle? <laughs> Very well. An aim. Now we're suffering bear attacks. Yeah, we're gonna go back to the camp. We won't tell him that she became a werewolf, despite the fact that I'm like, mm. he kind of deserves to know, and that Zathrian was lying. I wonder if we can con confront Zathrian about it too. You know? Hey, Cameron, guess what? I killed so many animals in the forest. I bet I could win Galen's heart. <laughs> what do you wish? I have Ironbark. Truly? Let me see. Yes, that is indeed Ironbark, and a substantial quantity of it as well. Well done. An agreement is an agreement. And I will craft something from this wood for you. What would you like? A bow? Or perhaps a breastplate? We can say your clan needs it more than I do. This is interesting. I think both would be more appropriate. Can I actually get both? Does he have enough? Both? But that is an unreasonable amount of crafting to expect just for finding the wood. I will do no such thing. <laughs> okay, um, you wouldn't have any wood at all if not for me, remember? I suppose you are correct. It is much to ask. But if you aid my clan as you say, then I have no objection. I'm but a humble dwarf. And I've reformed the wood to my will. A Dalish longbow and a breastplate for you. 
May they serve you well. A humble dwarf and a greedy one. <laughs> Wolf killer was crafted by a master Dalish craftsman. An arrow fired from it will almost always find the heart of the beast it is aimed at. Eight plus eight damage against beasts. Yeah, damn. If we had Leliana right now um, going through this area instead of Zev, that would be incredible. But we're going to continue having Zev for the elven side of things. Varathorn's armor. The metal looks uh, as if it was were met were wet with rain. Uh, the scales have been carved into the shapes of leaves, each different and detailed, even to veins and insect bites. A medium armor. I don't know if I even have anyone that wields um, that we has medium armor. Let's just heal everyone of their injuries real quick. Real quick. I got both. All right, Arthras. Let's have a look at this. You have returned. Is there any chance you have news of Denala? Uh, I do. You have news. Have you found her? Are, are you certain? She gave me her scarf. See for yourself. That is her scarf. Where did you find her? What's become of her? She died from the curse. Zathrian told you the truth. She was a werewolf, just as you suspected. I can't, in good conscience, say that Zathrian told you the truth. I am going to say that she was a werewolf, but she's not suffering anymore. She was a werewolf, just as you suspected. So I was right. But what became of her? She died, Atheris, but not before she sent her love. She told you that? Yes. That is what she would do. Then... It is over. I should be thankful, I think. At least she is at peace now. You have been most kind, my friend. Here is the amulet, as I promised. Now I should go and make arrangements. I must mourn my wife as is proper. Dareth Shiral, fare you well. Nice. Arthras's pendant. A pendant made from polished walnut wood carved to look like a pair of circling hawks. Oh, Dagon's back. Greetings again, my friend. I should thank you again for your help. I don't want your efforts to go unrewarded. Here is a gem I traded for when I was amongst the outsiders. I thought to make a necklace out of it for my bride, but I want you to have it. I know it is of worth. Mate, um, you can keep it for your wife, that's fine. Uh, it's not necessary, keep it, I insist. You wish me to keep it? Then you are truly generous. Thank you again. And now, I am afraid I must rest. The Keeper says I am not yet fully recovered, after all. I wish you well, my friend. I am a sometimes not greedy dwarf. <laughs> you there, mate. Can I confront you about this, uh, this lie of yours? Yes. What is it you need? Have you news? I encountered Arthras's wife, Denyla, in the forest. I know who Denyla was. She died the moment she turned into a ravening, mindless beast. Oh, great. Athras needs to accept that. He's got the he's got the Obi-Wan Kenobi approach. What I told you was true, from a certain point of view. When Denyla became a werewolf, the part of her that was Dalish died. So, in a way, I told you the truth. Why didn't you just tell him what happened? She wasn't such a mindless beast. She spoke for one. She spoke, did she? Surprising, but then her transformation was very recent. Still, she is doomed in the end. I hope you put her out of her misery. She told me the werewolves had overcome the curse. That seems unlikely. They are savage beasts. Even if they could speak, I doubt they would have anything worthwhile to say. I really like this. This flips a whole sort of uh, stereotypical script on its head. Is we come here and we're like, ah, yes, the elven people. Elves. We love the elves. Elves are always, you know, elves. 
And werewolves are werewolves, savage beasts, and it's very traditional fantasy stuff. But you come here, and the elf guy's a douchebag, and the werewolves seem to have a plight here. They have a genuine grievance. They, they got cursed, but they've overcome it. Or so we have been told, at least so far. And it makes it so much more interesting that we're just like, oh, werewolves got a point. And this guy is an idiot. Or at least resistant to, um, to this information. And it's going to cause some trouble. Have you tried talking to them at all? I think you can see for yourself what the end result of such a venture would be. Intelligent or not, they are hardly peaceful. The werewolves are unimportant. It is Witherfang whom you must seek out. And if they keep you from him, then your course is clear. Do you know anything about a werewolf named Swift Runner? I was not aware they had names. But no, I know nothing about any Swift Runner. This man is ignorant. Did you know that some of the werewolves can speak? Speak? You mean speak actual words? That seems unlikely. They are savage beasts. Even if they could speak, I doubt they would have anything worthwhile to say. They seem to have some grudge against your people. The same grudge they hold against any who trespass in the forest, I imagine. We also killed many of them during the attack. The werewolves are unimportant. It is Witherfang whom you must seek out. And if they keep you from him, then your course is clear. My course is getting clearer by the second, but not in the way that you expect it, sir. Have you ever encountered a rhyming oak tree in the forest? We call those possessed trees sylvans. The only ones I have ever encountered were little more than berserk killers. I am surprised you found one self-possessed enough to speak with you, never mind rhyme. It's almost as if I've been in this forest for 20 minutes, and I have discovered so much more than you have, sir. You live here. <laughs> I must return to caring for my people. Creator's speed on your way. Mm. Okay. Okay then. Sure thing. Back into the forest I go. Alright, let us continue our journey further into the east. What an interesting looking tree. There do be some inter do there do be some wild trees out here. Uh, that doesn't look super nice over there. We got some we got some ruins with what looks to be an almost demonic presence. Is it the power of the fade? Ah, tree. Uh, ooh. <laughs> Okay. Oh, this is just the southwest exit, so that... Okay. That really took us around to those two exits super quickly. It's possible that you can completely miss Arthras's wife, then. Already forgotten her name. Don't know how to say it. Denila. Yeah, what's going on here? My character just shrugging. I didn't think we made any progress. We could barely see our way through the mist, and now we are back at the beginning again. Oh, nature of the beast. The, the way deeper into the forest is blocked by some magical barrier to get past. You must find some way to placate the forest or trick it, which means we need to get this acorn so we can pretend to be a tree, of which there are now multiple trees right there. Get him! God, if I had Morrigan right now, I'd be burning these trees down with fire blast, that's for sure. <laughs> Sten doing a terrible job at getting the attention of the of the Sylvans there. Zev's just like, I am the tank now. A 
Mathal's blessing, the symbol of Mathal, the god of vengeance, is eerily vivid on the face of this shield. Nice. Mathal, the great protector. Elganan had defeated his father, the sun, and all was covered in darkness. Pleased with himself, Elganan sought to console his mother, the earth, by replacing all that the sun had destroyed. But the earth knew that without the sun, nothing could grow. She whispered to Elganan the truth and pleaded with him to release his father, but Elganon's pride was great and his vengeance was terrible, and he refused. It was at this moment that Mathal walked out of the sea of the earth's tears and onto the land. She placed her hand on Elganon's brow, and at her touch he grew calm and knew that his anger had led him astray. Humbled, Elganon went to the place where the sun was buried and spoke to him. Elganon said that he would release the sun if the sun promised to be gentle and to return to the earth each night. The sun, feeling remorse at what he had done, agreed, and so the sun rose again in the sky and shone his golden light upon the earth. Elganan and Mathal, with the help of the earth and the sun, brought back to life all the wondrous things that the sun had destroyed, and they grew and thrived. And that night, when the sun had gone to sleep, Mathal gathered the glowing earth around his bed and formed it into a sphere to be placed in the sky, a pale reflection of the sun's true glory. I was wondering if this was going to be a story that would result in some sort of creation of a moon as well. That was cool. Okay, so pathway up that way. So that's the forest barrier. Some enemies around the corner. It's just more raging bears. <laughs> Okay, this is a much bigger area. Very well. I shall do it. Two ogres, eh? Two ogres, eh? Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, down. As you say. Oh, win. <laughs> I saved your life, Win. Oh, the double death blow! The double ogre death blow. Let's go, Stan. Hell yes. That's so sick. Double ogre death blow. Steel spiked collar. Another gravestone. The air seems unnaturally cold around this ancient tombstone. Runes. Oh, here we go. We've got disturb this time. Runes of warding are carved into the surface and we can disturb the wards. So we were not able to disturb the other one, but we can disturb this one. Legend Legend of the Juggernaut. Oh my god. Okay, the Mage's Treasure. Unless I'm overwhelmed. Whoa! Oh, we've got a revenant. Oh shit. Can I just win? Can I ask you a question? What the fuck are you doing? The way that, um, <laughs> just the way that Win was like, yes, run right to the revenant. Compete for points. Ah! 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 
Gotcha. Nice. Juggernaut plate boots. The emblem of the Archon of the Tevinter Imperium is stamped in gold inside these boots. The metal has the otherworldly shimmer that indicates it has been infused with lyrium. When equipped in a set with the Juggernaut armor, gloves, and helm, the character gains a bonus to strength and constitution. Nice. And then some heavy plate armor. So the Codex has given us some stuff. Let's have a look at this. Um... Legend of the Juggernaut. The arm of the Imperium is long. Once it reached even this forest in a time when the barbarian tribes of the Clain still ruled the land. The Tevinter Magisters fought to take it from them, inch by inch if need be, using terrible magic. The Magister Harak brought an army to this forest, led by Alaric, his friend and general. For Alaric, Harak fashioned a suit of the finest armor, infused it with lyrium and his own blood magic, and named it Juggernaut, after the unstoppable giant golems guarding the gates of Minrathus. Thus armed did Alaric win many victories against the clan. When defeat came, it came from within. Alaric's own lieutenants rose up against him, jealous of the power he had curried with the Magisters and eager to take the Juggernaut armor from him. Alaric was slain. And as each successor gained the armor, the other lieutenants turned against him instead. The Tevinter outpost fell to vicious infighting. In a fury, Magister Harak voyaged to the outpost and slew the last three lieutenants. The Clan, however, were already approaching the outpost in force. The barbarian chieftain of the Clan desired the fabled armor himself, and even with all his power, Harak could not hope to stand against them all. Instead, Harak used the last of his own life force to cast a spell of blood magic that bound demons to the bodies of the three dead lieutenants as well as Harak's own lifeless corpse. These bound revenants hid the pieces of the juggernaut armor, and although the barbarians sacked the outpost, the chieftain found neither the armor nor the revenants. The Juggernaut's armor legend live on, and more than just one brave soul has ventured into the depths of the Brazilian forest in search, never to return. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get it. And it looks like you might have to disturb all the gravestones to get them, and this might have just been the first one to disturb. And for some reason the other gravestone that we saw in the previous area was just nothing. For now? Maybe it's the final one. More Dalish Gloves. Except not a gift this time. Mm, okay, this area is much bigger. Oh! And there is there is a Niren. Hey, Wynn, you ready? Here's your pal. Friends, turn back, please. These woods are a danger to those who do not know the paths. A Niren? Wait, I... I remember your face. But younger, more impulsive, stern. Win? I thought they had killed you. They very nearly did. The Templars found me while I was searching for the Dalish. They ran me through and left me for dead. I brought this on you. Oh... I was a dreadful mentor, harsh and impatient. I, I am sorry for the way I treated you. I've put that behind me, and you should too. I didn't fit in with the Templars in your Chantry. My path lay elsewhere. Irving is a reasonable man. He will find some way for you to return. The Circle needs new blood. It needs to change. I have fond memories of Irving. He was always kind to me. I will consider your proposal, and perhaps I will speak with Irving. However, I promise nothing. Now, it is getting late and you have much to do. You should be on your way. Oh. We could stay longer if you wish it, Wynne. No, we've spent enough time on my personal affairs. It is time for us to move on. Look at this. It's the hardened sap of a tree native to this forest. It's been something of a lucky charm for me, and now I want you to have it. Very well. I'm grateful. May your gods smile on you and Aaron. And on you. My favorite aspect of all of my characters is that we're always just getting in such a bloody mess and we're covered in darkspawn blood or just whatever. And we always meet people and we're just like, sup? <laughs> like, <laughs> and Wynn's always like, <clears throat> I'm keeping my distance and I'm clean. 
Uh, what did we just get? A Niren's token. This teardrop shaped pendant is a chunk of dried sap on a length of twine. It's warm to the touch and the same pale gold as the rising moon. While equipped, it augments Wind's Vessel of the Spirit spell. Awesome, I was going to give it to Wind anyway, but it literally is even better just giving it to her. Nice. Okay. I can get behind that. Welcome back. Is there something I can do for you? Why didn't you stay with the Dalish? I did for some years. The tribe made me feel very welcome, as though I were a lost child. They taught me elven magics and told me the old stories. But I wasn't one of the Dalish, no more than I was a circle mage. I owe them much, and so I stay close by, but I do not count myself among their number. My home is out here in the forest with the trees and animals. I learned to listen to them, and they taught me well. Okay. You know about Wind's condition, don't you? Yes, she mentioned it. It is quite a miracle, isn't it? Why do you think it happened? I cannot explain it. Perhaps the spirit felt she had a task to perform. One last apprentice to teach. She is spending her last days in your company, helping you in your quest. Perhaps this is what she feels she needs to do. So you're not angry at Wynne anymore? I don't bear grudges. And it was Wynne who showed me that the Circle wasn't really where I was supposed to be. She is a good person with a noble heart. She always tries to do what she thinks is best for others. She tried so hard with me, I could tell. Unfortunately, I wasn't listening. And all she knew to do back then was yell more. I forgave her many years ago. It's a shame she carried that guilt for so long. Did you tend to my wounds? Of course. Let me see. I mean, I don't have any, but thank you. It made Dex very happy. Nice. All right, then. Uh, how do you feel, Win? You're quite taken with each other, aren't you? <clears throat> Excuse me? Now's not the time or the place. <laughs> All right. I didn't talk to everybody in the party camp after my events. So I got on with my day. You know. Gentleman never tells. He just shares it with an entire YouTube audience and has to awkwardly watch a sex scene take place as if he's sitting in the same room with his parents going, yes, this is happening right now. Um... Yes, quite. I've noticed your blossoming relationship, and I wanted to ask you where you thought it was going. She is a cunning woman, a Malificar. She will use you for her own ends. I know, and I can't help but fall for it. I'm a dwarf king who needs her goth witch queen. No, I trust Morrigan. By the way, win. I am telling you what I see and what my instincts tell me. And even if the feelings you share are genuine, this affair may not be the best thing for either of you. You are a Grey Warden. You have responsibilities which supersede your personal desires. Well, Wynne, it's a good thing that I'm dating Morrigan and you're not. I can handle my responsibilities in my relationships. She told me she'll regret it, and I agree, but I'm doing it anyway. Love is ultimately selfish. <laughs> it demands that one be devoted to a single person who may fully occupy one's mind and heart to the exclusion of all else. A Grey Warden cannot afford to be selfish. You may be forced to make a choice between saving your love and saving everyone else. And then what would you do? I'll do exactly what Morrigan would do, save everyone else. You're making things sound more dire than they are. Nothing is certain. Not in these times. You cannot take anything for granted. I want you to be aware of this. I just wanted to talk to you about Aniran. Morgan and I can handle whatever comes our way. If you insist, I have given my advice. Do with it what you will. I did not ask for your advice. What's on your mind? Nothing about uh, Aniran. I might save the circle questions for when we get to the camp. It is no trouble. Classic. 
Uh, what is? Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? What is happening right now? I'm just peeing on this hermit's. I'm just peeing on this hermit's tent. Um, he just appeared. Did he just uh, literally appear out of nowhere? It appears someone has dug a hole beneath the stump, leading to a tiny and a filthy cave of sorts. Obviously, the hermit sleeps in there. There also appears to be a small cubby hole within the body of the trunk itself. It is filled with mud, twigs, and other debris. Hold on, you. That's private property. That's an old man's home, that is. Keep out. Keep out. Oh. Okay, that dude jumped out of the tree stump? Leave it alone. For now, uh, we will talk with the man. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Not a werewolf and not a spirit, even. What other woods coming to? Um... This is music. Oh, you're the thief who took the Grand Oak's acorn. A uh, madman hiding in the forest, who are you? Questions, questions, always questions. They say it was questions that made me mad. Will it do the same for you? Ask a question and you'll get a question, but give an answer and you'll receive the same. Oh, I do so love to trade. You want me to answer a question? Wouldn't I have to ask you a question first? Isn't that a question? Would you know a question if it was asked? I should certainly hope so. No, that is not a question. And if it be an answer, it'd be an answer to a question I've not asked. Have you no sense for the rules? Be careful, Grey Warden. This is no ordinary man. He is a mage. Driven mad, perhaps, but still powerful. No fair bringing mages to a guessing game. Will you play by the rules or not? I think I'd rather just kill you. Then would you like to ask me a question? I think it is your turn to ask, is it not? Do you have anything to trade? Let's see. I'll trade you an acorn, huh? a helmet I found, or a book I finished reading years ago, provided you have something interesting in return. Um... An acorn? Is that the Grand Oaks acorn? Ah, suddenly it all becomes clear. You here, that talking tree there, it all makes sense now. As a matter of fact, yes. I do have that tree's acorn. I stole it, and it was easy. Silly tree should have locked it up tighter. If you want it, you'll have to trade me for it. And nothing from that silly tree. No leaves or branches or anything. But that's all I have to say about that. An answer for an answer. There you go. It's time to kill you. <laughs> do you want to ask me another question? May I? Oh, yes, I think I might. Now. What shall be the first? Oh, yes. What is your name? My name is Alfred. Uh -huh. So you claim. They sent you, didn't they? But you're too tricky, and you're trying to fool me. Well, I'm on to you, just so you know. But it is your turn to ask now. Ask. Ask away, I dare you. So you live in this stump? Yes, I live here, and it's not as bad as you think. Where else to go, eh? I must stay away from them. They're out there and looking. They will take your secrets, oh yes, all of them, and leave you empty. But that's all I have to say about that. An answer for an answer. There you go. Do you want to ask me another question? May I? Oh yes, I think I might. Hmm. Where were you born? I was born in Orzammar, of course. Hmm. So you say, fiendishly clever of you to maintain this facade for so, so long. So anything I, I answer... I it yet. Mark my words. Okay. But it is your Anything I answer, he'll be suspicious ask, of. Ask away, I dare you. Great. Um... Who are you? Who am I? Why do you want to know? Did they send you? Did they tell you to ask? You're breaking the rules of the game. That's a lot of questions. You'd better have some answers. Ah! Damnation! Caught by my own rules! Oh, ho, ho, ho. Did they tell you to pretend to be an innocent stranger with a head full of fluff and nothing? I'm trickier than I look. <laughs> I survive still, and the trees, they leave me be. <laughs> I've won. They will never find me. Never! I found you. So you did. But I'm watching you. If they sent you, I'll know. 
But that's all I have to say about that. An answer for an answer. There you go. Another question? May I? Oh, yes, I think I might. Let's see. Do you have a knowledge of the arcane arts? Uh, I am a dwarf. Can't you tell? If I could tell, I wouldn't have to ask you now, would I? Do you have the knowledge or not? No, of course not. Oh, well, that's disappointing. But wait, what if you were lying? Aha. You thought to scamper away without suspicion, did you? Well, I'm on to you. But it is your turn to ask now. Ask. Ask away, I dare you. Okay. Uh, how do I enter the center of the forest? It's where the wolfmen have their lair, but the trees will block the path. There's a way to fool the trees, of course. Trees are thick, wooden things, after all. Easily fooled, if you know how. And how... Um, when I can't ask this question. But there's two questions. And how do you fool them? Oh my, no, that's quite a question. I think that answer deserves something a little extra first, don't you? I stole something from an oak tree some time ago, and it won't stop pestering me for it back. Would you be so good as to turn it into firewood or something equally dead? Um... Okay. You want me to destroy the Grand Oak. So here we go. We have a choice of helping this guy to get us into the center of the forest or helping the demonic tree that speaks in rhyme. Are you talking about the rhyming oak? You know of it? Good. That makes this much easier. Yes, that's the one. Uh, I'm not going to kill some oak tree because you asked me to. It's up to you. Yes, indeedy. Your choice. Time to move on now. Do you want to ask me another question? I think it is your turn to ask, is it not? Okay. Do you have the Grand Oaks acorn? <sighs> Which is what we've already asked. But that's all he I wants to, to do a trade. That. May I? Oh, yes, I think I might. What is your relationship with your father? Oh, um... I never knew my father. Hmm. Interesting. Most interesting. So that means that you did indeed have a father. <laughs> ah, I knew I would trip you up sooner or later. But it is your turn to ask now. Ask. Ask away, I dare you. Okay. Um, do you have anything to trade? Let's see. I'll trade you an acorn, a helmet I found, or a book I finished reading years ago, provided you have something interesting in return. I kind of want all of those things. <laughs> well, that's your business then, isn't it? I still answered your question, and now it's my turn again. May I? Have you ever seen the Grand Cathedral of Val Royo? Why would you even want to know that? Ah, that's my business, isn't it? Have you seen it or not? No, of course not. Val Royo is a thousand miles away. Right. I've always wondered what it looked like. Oh, well, it was worth a question. Your turn. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, okay. Oh, no? Well, you just let me know if you change your mind. Run along and tell them whatever you wish. I intend to keep digging. The runoff screen. What the hell? Okay. Oh, the dancing. Oh, he's doing the, the Fortnite dance. He did it. Okay. I'm now going to figure out what the hell's going on here. Hello, mate. You're joking me. Don't you have any manners whatsoever? Were you raised by a rodent? Okay. Um... Well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to clearly reach into the into the cubby hole. Mm, no offense, but might I try? I've got a quick hand, after all. I'm also a rogue. Go ahead, show off. Ha! Let's see. Oh, when was the last time I slipped my hand into some dark hole? Hmm. I remember a long story that. And there we go. It was definitely trapped, but I'm too awesome by far. Here's what was inside. Thank you, Zev. You're a robber, is what you are. They sent you, didn't they? Well, I'll show you. They won't get away with this. 
Oh. One, wonderful. <laughs> I thought that was good. He summons demons. All right, what did we get? Oh, like trash? What did we even get, dude? We didn't get any new items. Okay. I, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do the we're gonna fuck around and get the acorn and give it to the Grand Oak because he told me some rhymes. I like him, even if he is a demon tree. This guy's crazy. No hope. <laughs> Haven't uh, gone up against rage demons in a long time. Nice. Well, magic staff, uh, dream, dream sever. Crafted during the third blight, this ring projects an antipodal application of fate energies that can disrupt or outright destroy. I'm not seeing any acorn. Oh, apparently I do have it. Oh, the lost acorn did come from the tree stump. How do we get the book and the helmet? Can we just go in? There's nothing in the trunk that appears worthy of your time. So we can't enter it. Okay. It has begun. Um, well in that case. Um, it's probably worth me loading this. And I want to see what the book and the helmet is all about then. What's this now? Let's see the alternate way. I think it is your turn to ask, is it not? Let's see. I'll trade. Book. And what do you have to trade for the book? I don't know. Um, gold coin? Coin? <laughs> what possible use could I have with coin? Do you see a money changer about? Dalish pendant? Ooh, shiny. I could lure a few ravens with that pretty. I'll be feasting for weeks, months even. <laughs> Give me that. There. Now that's done. What else have you got on your agenda, hmm? What tailish pendant did I have? Oh, I see. What day are we... So we got Archons of the Imperium. We got a Codex entry in the book. Okay, let, let me actually... What did we have? So we're... We're missing one, I suppose. Sorry, I should probably check what my inventory is before I hand over a random Dalish pendant. Oh, Arthras's pendant. So it's uh, what I'm getting from this is because it's not a very good pendant. But what I'm getting from this is there are side quests or things that we're able to do in this area in this forest to get multiple items from this guy and the only way you can get them even though apparently he should have them on his body is to trade with him what's this now you again uh you go away? okay what about I think it is your turn. the see. helmet and what do you have to trade for the helmet oh damn okay so it's the dalish pendant again hmm? there now that's done what else have you got to <clears throat> Have you ever been in love? Yes, I'm in love right now, I think. <laughs> oh? How boring. Maybe they didn't send you after all. That's a bit of a relief, isn't it? All right, then. If you still have something to ask, ask away. Oh, yes. I still have the acorn in that old book. Oh, yes. And what do you have to trade for the book? I don't have... Mm, Coin? <laughs> damn. Well, that's your business. Oh, I see. What's the helmet? An ancient elven helm. The metal of this helm was forged into organic vine and leaf shapes when equipped in a set with ancient elven armor, gloves, and boots. A bonus to defense. So that's a, a cool full set of uh, elven gear. I don't... I don't... I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what we should... What we should roll with. I... Let's read the codex entry for the for the book uh, at the at the very least. And this is why quick saves for multiple outcomes is a good idea when you're trying to get into the lore. 
What's this now? All right, you let's get the the book. See. Let's read the book. And what do you have to trade? There, now that's done. What? Oh, I. Archons of the Imperium. Archon Darinius of Tevinter journeyed deep into the lightless realm of the dwarves and there forged a covenant with Endrin Stonehammer, another Endrin, Lord of the Dwarven Empire. As a symbol of their pact, Endrin gave the Archon a pair of rings, one that shone like the evening star and one as luminous as the dawn. So long as the rings were united, Darinius need fear nothing, for the friendship of the dwarves is a mighty sword and shield. The Archon wore the rings of dawn and dusk for 20 years, never removing them. And when he died, they were cut from his fingers by magisters squabbling over his vacant throne, then separated and finally lost. From a book formerly in the possession of a hermit. Alright, well, I gotta get the acorn anyway, don't I? So, uh, I'm gonna make, a, make an enemy out of you, for sure. So I guess I could trade the Dalish Pendant as well for the acorn, I suppose? What's this now? You again? Hmm. Uh, Alright then. Of course. The acorn. Oh, yeah. So he doesn't like coin. It makes me wonder if there are any other items that we can find out here, but it doesn't. We're, we've reached a, the most of this area, I think. So we're just going to have to just going to have to jump in here. Let's try and do the thing Don't do where we try and enter. Whatsoever. You try to squeeze into the small opening, but it is too small for even a child to fit into. How the hermit enters is a mystery. All right, let's get the acorn. We got an acorn and a book. Mm, no offense, but might I try? I've How do we... Mm, it makes me wonder if we should... No, I don't really care about the elven set anyway. It's fine. All right, now we'll do this again. So we traded the, the pendant for a book. Oh, the screaming. I still remember my first battle. <laughs> a good hermit is a dead hermit. He's got less stuff this time. Alrighty. Back to the Great Oak. That is what we will will commit to that. <laughs> we will keep the book. Alright, let's take a look in here. See if I can interact with this now. Ah, here we go. This is the tombstone of a Tevinter general. The epitaph makes it clear that his spirit was left to guard over something. Now I can engage. Now I can interact with this. <clears throat> Disturb. Don't let them overwhelm us. Oh, that skeleton archer gets back up. That's cool. I shall do it. I have no idea what I'm dealing with up there. I'm getting yanked. Fanged skeleton. Ooh, I'm paralyzed. Oh my god. Oh god. Now we go into battle. Yep. Okay, let's do cleansing aura. Wind's dead. Um. Quickly. Jesus. Okay. Um. Are you is this? Oh, it's a skeleton mage. All of a sudden, this makes sense. Why everything is is not working out. Okay, skeleton mage, gotcha. I am ready. Oh. Close, close. Ah. Need a moment of rest. Ah. Ah. <coughs> okay, so everyone's gonna die. <gasps> we lived. Zev took it out. Damn it, anyways. <laughs> oh, that was close. That was so close. My friend. I almost got cleansing aura off. Oh damn. Juggernaut helmet. Nice. Find the mage's treasure. You have recovered two of the items hidden in the forest by the Tevinter mage. Two more remain. Okay. 
That was a that was certainly an easy fight. Definitely didn't almost get totally destroyed. That skeleton mage being left, uh, you know, being left unchecked was the problem. Now we return Acorn to Tree. My acorn is still gone, so I pray to thee. Hast thou any news for me? Is this the acorn you seek? My joy soars to new heights indeed. I am reunited with my seed. As I promised, hear it be. I hope it's magic. Pleases thee. Keep this branch of mine with thee and pass throughout the forest free. Nice. I wish thee well, my mortal friend. Thou brought my sadness to an end. May the sunlight find you. Thy days be long, thy winters kind, and thy roots be strong. Cool. The way deeper into the forest is blocked, and now we can, we've tricked it because we have, uh, we have an oak branch. A branch taken from the grand oak, this staff seems as if it's still alive. It is warm to the touch, the wood almost shifting and moving underneath one's fingers. So I'm assuming that, I don't know if we have to equip it or if we can just have it in our inventory. Uh, but what I was planning to do anyway was actually head back to the camp so we could um, um, so we could switch out Wind with Morrigan again because Wind's done her Aniran thing and now we can go back to having Morrigan in the party. Okay, here we go. We approach the barrier. Now, if we just have the, the staff in our inventory, will it work? Oh, yes. The Grand Oaks branch allows you to pass the barrier. Oh, and Swift Runner is here. The forest has not been vigilant enough. Still, you come. You are stronger than we could have anticipated. The Dalish chose well, but you do not belong here, outsider. Leave this place. Why won't you let me try to settle this dispute? <sighs> you are sent by the treacherous Dalish to kill with a fang. I will not stand by and allow that to happen. Okay. I have no intention of harming Witherfang, I want to talk. I actually want to see if this is possible, because this is the, the most intriguing aspect of this to me. Why do you call the Dalish treacherous? You attacked them. Yeah, they both attacked each other. Number four, please. I do not believe you. I will not risk believing you. You are an intruder in our home. You come to kill, as all your kind do. We have learned this lesson well. Here, Witherfang protects us. Here we learn our names and our beloved. We will defend Witherfang and this place with our lives. Oh, God damn it. Really? Surely I can, surely there's something I can do about this. Like, surely. Well, this is this is just sadness at this point. Mm. 
It seems as though... It seems as though... I see. We're not able to deal with this guy in a peaceful manner. Oh! With a fang? Whoa. Okay. That was so cool. We just got smacked away by the white wolf. It seems that conflict was inevitable there, but as we are about to deliver a killing blow, saved by a white wolf with also like the curse in its paws, you could see. That was really, really cool. I'm really liking this uh, this segment of the game. This is this is a lot of fun. Uh, we are going to bring this episode of Dragon Age Origins to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today for some more Bra uh, Brazilian Brazilian forest um, <laughs> escapades. Killing a hermit to help a tree. Uh, this is this is fantastic. I'm loving it. I can't wait to see how this is going to go. I am going to try and see if we can pursue an option here. Uh, that can lead to a peaceful resolution because the werewolves are seeming uh, like seemingly so much more than what you'd expect here. And I really love it. So thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time.